presidential daily brief being denied to the president-elect? I see a number of national security concerns in this interregnum period. The first, as you mentioned, is the denial to President-elect Biden of national security briefings. There are a number of crises that are festering around the world right now, a conflict in Armenia and Azerbaijan, a hot war on the eastern edge of Ukraine, China pressing further into Hong Kong. Uh, President-elect Biden has to be ready to go on day one. It is true that we've probably never had someone uh, so experienced with respect to foreign relations, but uh, he hasn't been getting these detailed briefings uh, for four years. Uh, the transition is only 10 weeks long, and if President Trump denies Joe Biden access to this information, uh, it frankly provides an avenue for our adversaries around the world to try to take advantage of this vacuum and of an administration that may not have all the information it needs. Second, the firing of Mark Esper yesterday is incredibly concerning. Uh, the fact that we don't have stable leadership at the top of the Department of Defense, that uh, the heads of the CIA or the FBI may be next, uh, also provides ample opportunity for adversaries around the globe to take advantage of that change in leadership, that instability of leadership. So this is a very dangerous moment. The president's delusion, which is being enabled by congressional Republicans, uh, is jeopardizing American national security. And in a recent interview with the Military Times, published just yesterday, Mark Esper said, quote, who's going to come in behind me? It's going to be a real yes man, and then God help us. So that's a real concern as well. Uh, could there be, you know, precipitous withdrawals from Afghanistan and Iraq without working out um, the ramifications of that? Well, listen, I think Mark Esper is trying to rewrite his own personal history. Uh, you're going to have all sorts of leaders in the Trump national security team claiming that it would have been so much worse had they not been there. Uh, I can't imagine that it could have been much worse. We have shattered the relationship with our allies. We have become an unreliable, unstable presence in the world. So many corners of the globe are uh, on fire right now. So Mark Esper may try to claim that he was standing in the way of all sorts of terrible behavior by this administration. Uh, I don't see much evidence of that. There were reports, as you just alluded to, that FBI Director Chris Wray, certainly that was signaled by the president. Even CIA Director Gina Haspel could be next. Your concerns about that? Well, uh, you know, very concerned, uh, especially when it comes to an attack on the FBI. We already have news, as you mentioned, of the Department of Justice uh, essentially being sent on a fishing expedition. Now, let's be clear what Barr is doing here. Uh, the campaign, the president's campaign, cannot find any evidence of voter fraud. And so now he has instructed Attorney General Barr to go find it for him. Now, Chris Ray may not want to be a party to that, but if he doesn't oblige, he may be gone within a week or so. Uh, and so what we worry about is the Department of Justice and the FBI being turned into fishing expeditions for voter fraud in order to populate these uh, cases that the president has brought with actual evidence. That's a really dangerous turn with respect to the impartial arms of American law enforcement. There's reporting in the Israeli press that Secretary Pompeo is going to try to uh, ramp up sanctions on Iran and try to tie President-elect Biden's hands going in to re-enter the Iran deal. Have you heard anything about that? It wouldn't be surprising. Uh, obviously, this administration is going to you know, try to take steps in the closing 60 days uh, to cement the mistakes they have made in the Middle East. Uh, they will likely make it harder for Biden to re-enter uh, the nuclear agreement. That would be disastrous for the world if uh, Iran got even closer to a nuclear weapon over the course of the next 60 days. But as we have seen just in the last 24 hours, they are also planning to move forward with massive arms sales in the region, in particular to the United Arab Emirates uh, during this lame duck. I don't know of any precedent, at least in the time that I've been in Washington, where presidents who are literally on their way out of office, who have been voted out of office by the American public, 
uh, are trying to sell this amount of arms into dangerous regions. So uh, this is par for the course from this administration. They no doubt are going to try to make it harder for Joe Biden to repair the mistakes that they've made. And I wish that Congress would step up and do something about it. I wish congressional Republicans would at the very least say to Mike Pompeo, if you want any future in Republican politics in this country, you need to stand down and give Vice President Biden uh, a chance to try to rebuild our reputation around the world.